Walk around the compound. Dun, 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 dun. I have a pen. I have an apple. Uh, apple pen. I have a pen. I have pineapple. Uh, pineapple pen. <laughs> oh, yamas. Yamas. <laughs> Yolo is like, this is why I avoid you. This is why I avoid you. <gasps> Whoa! Look at this that we have here. Oh my uh, goodness. Oh my goodness. Zo-M-G. Zo-M-G. Ah. This thing. And it's for them! It was a uh, Eagle Scout project. Yeah. Local Eagle Scout. His name was uh, Charlie. Came and built this uh, shelter specifically, fantastically, for the muse. For the muse. Mew, mew, mew. Mew. It's for you. It's for you, muse. There's, and it was just yesterday, and they're still a little bit like, ah, <laughs> I don't know. But uh, once it gets all... Uh, we still have to make it a little bit, some more amenities, add some lights. Of course, we're going to be putting some hay down and things like that. But this is a lot more, you know, sheltery than the, than the old one that we had before. Remember that old one that we had? That, uh, it got uh, carted away by the strong winds of that thunderstorm. Yeah, smashed it all to crap. This one, I have a feeling, will last a little bit longer. <laughs> Hi, baby. She's like, I don't trust it. <laughs> what is it? It's looking at me. Yama. Oh. Hello, all you big cat lovers out there. It's me, Derek, again. Welcome to another super duper fantastic walk around the compound webcast. Well, we've got this little girl right here following me like a weirdo. Ugh. Ugh. Actually doing things a little bit different. Uh, today we are going to be sitting down and enjoying Thanksgiving dinner. I'm filming this on Sunday. And this is, this is going to be for the Tuesday webcast. I'm filming it on Sunday. So actually today is going to be the day way late because I wasn't around. I wasn't around for actual Thanksgiving. Um, I was away. I had to work. So, yeah. Uh... Promising news, good uh, things. Uh, Wally seems to be acting uh, a little bit more uh, better, um, a little bit more uh, chipper. Noe is also in heat, and uh, Wally has been uh, definitely experiencing a lot of attitude, saying, uh, you know, get away from Bay, get away from my girl, I will murder your face. Which is a good thing, which is a good thing. Um, Dr. Bill came by, saw him the other day, you know, we we were uh, we were actually going to because we never did do the uh, cerebrospinal thing because he, he's he's looking good as far as yeah he's he's acting better he's eating a little bit more and in order to get a cerebrospinal fluid sample we would have to sedate him we'd have to fully sedate him and you only ever want to do procedures like that if. If the, yeah. if you think it's going to be worth it, and if he's showing maybe some signs of improvement, then you don't want to engage in what could be a potentially risky procedure. Um, so yeah, that's that's one of those kind of things. And you always have to make these decisions. You always have to make the look at you. Wawa, wawa, wa wa wa. Oh, he's he's yelling at me now. He's like, get away from bed. Get away from bed. He's like, I feel good, but I also feel a little bit angry. Blah, blah, blah. My name is Wally. So, that's, yeah. Let's just keep on hoping that, you know, whatever bugs he may have had inside of him, he's fighting against and, and he's improving. We just fed last night, so um, I'm anticipating that a lot of the cats are going to be rather sleepy. Rather sleepy. Like this one in here, Sleepy Selena. 
with her belly full of proteins. Oh, yeah, windy. It's a windy day. Windy, cloudy. Just put a fire in the fireplace, even though it's probably a little bit too warm for it. But you know what? Ambiance, okay? Ambiance. That's, that's like someone, you know, like saying that their name is Beyonce. It's like, I'm Beyonce. That's who I am. <laughs> you mean Beyonce? No. I shorten it. I'm Beyonce. Oh, my mistake. Look at this handsome feller. Look at this handsome guy. And his peeps. And his peeps. Oh, look at it. They curled right at the time, right at the time that I zoomed in. Right at the time, right at the time. That's great. <gasps> we've got a, we've got a rubbernecker. Wanting to, wanting to get in on Polly's cuteness. Well, I guess that there's enough cuteness for everyone. Where you going, bud? Papa. He's got himself a horse head. Oh, you ate a lot. You ate a lot, didn't you? Yes, you did. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. I am guessing that Solano is going to be very sleepy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, uh, I believe that that is a very... Uh, uh, correct assumption. Look at him. Look at him. <laughs> oh my gosh, Solano. You are an absolute mess. How do you even, how did you even just, how do you even remember to breathe? <laughs> Look at him. He's just got his nose just propped up against like the doorway. It's all smashed up. Oh, so cute. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Oh, oh, and he got himself a horse head too. You can see there's all the hair from the, the horse mane that he ripped out. So he ripped it out, carried it around his enclosure for the, you know, the evening, ate all the meat off of the neck, and it's probably in there with him. So he's probably in there sleeping with it right now. <sighs> Solano knows how to party. Solano knows how to party. Hi, Lisa. How are you? It's Lisa. She's been volunteering for quite some time. Many years. Her and her husband, JD. Look at these kitties. And Lisa's very particular about uh, Miss Melita. No. Uh, yeah, chose, chose like the craziest cat like in the entire compound to just fall in love with. She's not crazy, she's misunderstood. <laughs> but yeah. Cassie! Cassie! Whoa! Hello! Mom. Yeah, you! How are you? Hey, no, no, no! Hi, sugar pie. Our pie's made of sugar. You are so cute. Oh, jeez, you're so cute. How do you just, how do you get by just being so cute? Everyone must just stop you. At every given time of any given day. And they're just like, oh, jeez, look how cute you are. And you just can't get anything done because everyone's just standing in, standing in your way. And they're just going, oh, jeez. Jeez, look at the cuteness. It's like I'm trying to get my groceries out to my vehicle. Can you please let me do that? No, I can't do it. I gotta stand in front of you. Tell you how cute you are. Such is the life of Cassie. Can't get nothing done. So many people. I appreciate the accolades, sir, but trying to go to the bathroom. 
Hey, bud. Oh, my goodness. Hearts in eyes. You know that whole thing, hearts in the eyeballs? Ah. Oh. Where you're just like, it's so beautiful. The kitties. I'm gonna go and see the girls inside. I'm gonna go see the girls. See what they're up to. I'm trying. Don't put the camera on me, please. <laughs> oh, hi, baby. Hold on, let me get the light on. I can't see you in all of your wonderful gloriousness. Your adorableness. Hey, beautiful. Hey, beautiful. Hold on. Here she goes. She's like, yes. She's like, yes, this is very nice. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Very much so. She's got a little bunny. <laughs> She's got a little bunny. She's like, we were taking a nap. So if you don't mind, I'm like, okay, all right. As you were. <gasps> hey. Hey, baby. <sighs> Love them. Love those babies. So much. So much. Just can't help it. Just can't help it. I think we're gonna go. We're gonna go this way, and then we're gonna go down that way, and then come up the other way, and then go back, and then so we'll. I think that's how we're gonna do it. I think that's how we're gonna do it. Peaser, stay there. Peaser, no, you're gonna screw up my plans. <laughs> you saw him. He was just like, "Hey, what are you doing? You want me to come over there? You, is it you want? You want me? You want me to go over there? Okay, okay. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Stay there. Hey, you want me? To, yeah, I'll go. I'll go over there. Sure. Sure. Yeah, right away. Good. He's still there. He's still there. All right. Hasn't screwed up the shot yet. It's a little windy. A little windy. I got my little, uh, I've got my little, uh, screen, uh, my glove. I don't know how much it's protecting. Hopefully it is. Hopefully it's protecting it okay. Because, uh, yeah, it's really, it's really breezy out here. But it's a south wind. It's a wind from the south. So it's not like frigid. It's just sort of there. Yeah. Oh. Uh, familiar face shout out. Familiar face shout out. I haven't done it in a while. Gotta bring it back. Some people are asking in the comment section. Well, what did I do for my face shout out ever again? I think he's just not doing it anymore. And I'm like, I'm gonna do it again. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. The familiar face shout out goes to Sapphire Crimson Claw. Sapphire Crimson Claw. And I wanted to say uh, this individual particularly because. You know, I've, 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 I've talked about different topics, and sometimes the topics they can be a little bit, they can be one-sided or other-sided or polarizing, or they can, they can be ones that, uh, you know, they can have content in them that sometimes people are a little bit just kind of like, well, this or that, or it, it, whether I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say the word disagreeable, or, but it can be, it can cause consternation, or, and like it can also cause confusion, and sometimes people don't always 
understand certain things. And um, this individual has a uh, very unique uh, personal backstory as what I can glean and garner from the comment section that they've written. And has given me a lot of perspective on some of the things that I've said and some of the things that I've had questions about. And I was really, I'm re a very, it always, always writes in the comment section very respectfully and from a place of just trying to be diplomatic and just conversational and bridging gaps. And I appreciate that. So Sam, Sapphire Crimson Claw, I'm shouting you out. So thank you very much for uh, being a familiar face on the webcast and providing your input and your insight into a lot of the discussions that I have and allowing me to have a greater degree of perception as far as certain opinions can be concerned and certain ideas. Things that, you know, I like I don't experience on my own. And it was like, you know, because I had that last... I'm just going to touch upon it briefly. But the, uh, the last webcast that I had, it definitely got a lot of people talking. But it really well, and I, I want to applaud everyone. Thank you so much uh, for really being good and civil in the comment section. I can't thank you folks enough. It's one of the reasons I love this community um, that we've created, that uh, we do we do communicate with each other. We talk to each other. We don't blow up and yell and, and just get like really nasty. Hi, Chomp Chomp. And it's just one thing that I really just appreciate. I, it's the environment that we've all created together is something that I'm so proud of. And it's something that I'm tremendously proud to be a part of. So, that's a really... Even when we're talking about things that can obviously be very uncomfortable or upsetting or polarizing, we still, us, in the pride, we come together. With, with civility and refinement. Yeah. Stiff upper lip. Uh-oh. Except when it comes to cuteness. When it comes to cuteness, we just fall apart. We completely fall apart. <laughs> no. Hi, BB. <laughs> when it comes to that. Ow. <laughs> Hi. Hey, sugar pie. You are just too much. You are too much. You're too much cuteness. Too much cuteness packed into a tiny little package. Too much cuteness in such a small package. You're bursting at the seams. Oh. Proteins, bruh. I nano. She's like, keep it moving. I'm like, yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> I will. I will keep it moving. You again. You again. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> one thing, and I will say, one of the main reasons, I, I wanted to talk about the things that I talked about in the last one because I, I do want to eventually make the point that in the long run a lot of this stuff is not going to matter all the fighting and the arguing that we're doing right now because man technology technology and the robots they're going to be taking over everything soon anyway and that's kind of like one of those kind of like oh it's kind of fun to make jokes about but part of it is actually kind of true I'm just Technology is going to change everything. It's going to revolutionize so many things. Excuse me, but it's not going to keep these guys from trying to garner attention. The robots will be able to do so much, but they won't be able to give these guys the understanding that there's enough I can give love to both. You don't have to be so jealous. You don't have to be so jealous, Ra. Look at him. Ra. Ra. Alright, if you're going to be like that, I'm going to walk away. Nope. 
Not gonna deal with that. Nope. Nope. You don't get to act like that. You need to be better. You need to be a big boy. You need to be a big boy. Oh. But there are some really, really wild technological developments that are uh, being, that are being brought to the forefront in so many different avenues in so many different ways. Um, I know that I've talked before about like Maslow's hierarchy of needs type thing, um, where you need to have, you know, your basic physiologic needs met, and then like above that are like your your, your social needs, and then above that are you know, you keep on going, like, if you don't have the things in, like, the lower tiered rungs met, then you can't focus on the things that are above that, until you get to the top, which is, like, self-actualization, and, you know, you know, a circular, I'm, I'm together, and I feel so good and wonderful, you know, but that, there's, there's definitely a lot uh, to that whole Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It's one of the reasons I think it needs to be thought of a lot more in, um, in environmentalist and environmentalism circles, in conservation circles, that so many people are quick to, so many people, they come from highly educated, um, westernized environments where the Maslow's hierarchy of needs is like so many of the bottom rung for so many citizens are, are taken care of. Like when you talk about people oftentimes from North America, from Europe, from um, some of the uh, more well-off Asian countries. <laughs> Hi! Your basic physiologic needs are met, a lot of your social needs are met, and then these people, they can become, uh, they can focus on like higher learning initiatives and they can focus on some of the things that are wrong, you know, in, in the natural world. They can, they can try to tackle conservation problems. But then they'll take a look and they'll point a finger at some of these places in the third world and they'll be like, well, poaching is a thing and retaliatory killing of lions is a thing. And a lot of times that's just simply because people there are poor and they don't have their basic needs for life and sustainment met. So they're, they're not going to care. People in those types of environments, they don't care about the welfare and the needs of animals when their own personal needs or the needs of their families are not met. And that's one of the reasons why the embrace, the embracement of certain technologies are going to be a game changer. They're going to be a wild game changer for everything. And I'm talking planetary wide. Like some of the stuff that they're doing with energy with solar technology is mind-blowing. Uh, like, of course, you take a look at some of the things like Tesla and Elon Musk, and as of right now, I think that solar technology accounts for like 1%, maybe 1% to 3% of all of planetary technology. But uh, some futurists are actually positing the idea that solar technology is going to account or be able to provide for a hundred percent of our global energy needs within 15 years. Now I know that that sounds like Derek, that's crazy. There's absolutely no way that that is possible. But what have I also talked about before? The law of accelerating returns. There's something called Moore's law which talks about uh, exponential growth of information-based technology, that you use one generation of computer technology to create the next generation of computer technology, which is double the cost and speed of the previous, and then you use that generation to create the next generation of computer technology. So there's an exponential and exploding uh, level of growth towards the cost to make these computers and then um, the, uh, the the performance that these computers allow okay and that just keeps on getting faster and faster and faster and then I talked before about the uh, the quantum computing uh, capabilities that exist and those types of things are being then applied to creating the materials necessary uh, for greater efficient or greater efficiency within solar panel technology. Um, also, like shrinking it down into like nanoscale or the molecular scale. 
that's directly tied to information-based technologies too. They're taking solar technology and they are um, infusing it with the capabilities of, of nanotechnology and nanobots. Um, small, smart devices. So, that's how some futurists are actually theorizing or positing the possibility that we will be able to have just like um, an amazing energy renaissance. Again, within like the next 15, 20 years, which I, it's, I know, it's crazy, it's crazy. And here's the other thing too that is really, really, um, it's awesome. But the idea of like solar technology being able to, because then like, the, again, the Tesla stuff, they have like these ultra strong uh, uh, roof tiles that are on individual homes, on individual domiciles. What that does is it actually decentralizes uh, the energy grid. If you have one large coal plant and it goes down, that takes out the energy for like a very large region, potentially thousands, tens of thousands of homes. But if you decentralize that energy and you make it more individualistic, individual homes, neighborhoods, stuff like that, when one, uh, when one unit goes out, it's not going to have these long-term kind of, kind of, I'm hanging back because there's a tour that's going on over here and I don't want to, it's there, you know, I'm talking about stuff and I don't want to lose my train of thought. <laughs> I know that's why I was like, why do you, why did he stop? Like, that's the reason why. Um, <clears throat> but uh, the big thing, yeah, the, uh, the decentralization, because it's kind of like the internet. Um, in the internet, it's like, a, the internet is basically just a network of just like computers and servers that are all able to communicate with each other. And if like one computer or one server goes down, the internet and like internet service providers can actually reroute and like that you still get, you still have internet available to you. Um, energy is moving towards that as well. Automation, like automated vehicles. That's another thing, like people, well, some of these politicians, they talk about like jobs, 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 we're gonna bring jobs, so it's like, the, all the automation, but what about the automation? Oh my goodness, it's going to just, it's gonna be huge. That's gonna be catastrophic, it's gonna be catastrophic to so many markets. Uh, well, it's gonna help some markets, but it's gonna really crush a lot. Um, like uh, self-driving technology. I mean, the trucking industry is going to, is going to have just really, really, really big impacts. Now, I have read some articles that are fairly interesting, and then they talk about how there's actually a shortage of truckers right now, and for the first generation of, like, self-driving car technology, they're basically going to have, like, human co-pilots. So it actually may, in the short term, um, help truckers, and may help people in the transportation industry. Layla. Layla, Layla, Layla. No, she wants to hang out over there. She wants to hang out over there. So, Layla, Layla, come here, baby. Come here, baby. But even like inside, of, like warehouses, um, like automation and self-driving technology is going to have huge impacts, huge impacts on, uh, on our efficiency. And like what that does is that it has like the doubling effect. Like once you like bring transportation costs down and like safety is going to go up, you're, you're going to talk about your prices are going to go down, like of goods and services, uh, of, of products, they're going to go down. So that's going to be a big thing. Um, 3D printing technology. That's going to be another big game changer. That's going to be a revolution. Again, these are all things that are actively being worked on right now. And these are things that uh, have made significant strides. Leaps and bounds, like, uh, uh, in, in progress, just within, like, the last few years. But 3D printing technology is going to be a huge game changer. Right now, it's clunky. It's in the beta versions. It's cost prohibitive. It's cost prohibitive. But in relatively short order, 3D printing technology is going to be, it's going to be pretty fantastic. And it's going to work 
at a much more uh, smaller and resolute scale with each successive generation. Meaning we're eventually going to get to the point where 3D printing technology is going to be able to give us like very complicated and complex goods and services. Right now they're just carving things off of uh, like plastic blocks. So they've got like, you know, like the little goop shooters of like, you know, kind of plasticky material and it just kind of creates like materials. Don't even think about things like that. Like it's going to be even more like specific and tiny. Eventually possibly even getting to the point where you're talking about, um, <clears throat> when you're talking about uh, 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 reconfiguring things at a near molecular level. That's like George Jetson type stuff. Also, 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 she's got her proteins and I'm gonna leave her alone. Back up very slowly, back up very slowly. Okay, okay. Things like nanotechnology. Um, companies like Facebook, IBM, and Google they have already made public their intent to basically take over the medical industry from the insurance companies and the, the pharmaceutical companies. Because the insurance companies and the pharmaceutical companies, they tend to have a vested interest in people not being well, people being unhealthy. But companies like Facebook, Google, and IBM, they do have a vested interest in being healthy and people being healthy because what they want it's for people to use their products. It's not because these companies are just altruistic and oh my gosh, they're such good people. No, 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 no. It's because like, hey, if people are healthy and they live longer, then more people can download and use our stuff. It just so happens that their values and our values kind of coincide. Well, how does a computer company take over a medical industry? Well, again, we're turning everything into basically a successive line of ones and zeros. It's turning into binary code. Like we have our genetic code uh, uh, sequenced. We have the, the human genome map, the human genome mapped. And all it takes is more advanced computer technology to be able to unlock these types of things. Like IBM, they came up with that Watson computer. Okay, Watson. Doctors are now using Watson to be able to uh, treat cancer, to do it at a much greater level than they've ever been able to before. Because Watson is a computer that understands um, just like basic human language. It understands uh, like colloquial speak and just the normal way that humans talk. And it also has access to just major, major, major databases. And it can bring that stuff up at much greater and faster uh, uh, capacity than just your standard human brain. So doctors are now becoming the co-pilots to some of these very, very, very powerful computers. And they're developing treatments for diseases um, based on just like different things and symptomologies and whatnot that they just did not have the brain power to do in the past. Like law, like the end and everything, like computers like Watson are gonna be able to absolutely uh, take the place of uh, numerous tasks that were performed by lawyers and paralegals. Most of the time, the reason that these people are so expensive to hire is simply because it takes a lot of time to look up information. It takes a lot of time to understand a lot of the different laws. And again, exponential exponential and a lot of people say like oh yeah well you're talking about all these things that are very you know highfalutin and whatnot but it's only going to be the rich that are going to have these things look at smartphones everyone has them everyone has smartphones now like we're talking about yes in the in the early stages of these types of things in the early stages of these things you're absolutely right that the wealthy but here's the other thing a lot of times the first generation of these technologies they suck anyway so let the rich people have the, the crappy versions of these technologies. Because once they work the bugs out and it becomes available for everyone, it's usually when it's finally good. And it happens very quickly. It happens very, very rapidly. These technological breakthroughs. Oh, like virtual reality? That's becoming way more immersive. That's becoming way more uh, comprehensive. Imagine eventually getting to the point, like, we already have technology. We're 3D printing uh, bionic arms. And we already have technology for people who are amputees 
or for paraplegics, where they're actually hooking computers up to people's brainwaves and they are, they are operating mechanical robotic arms. That's fascinating and it's wonderful and it's great. Eventually we're going to be able to employ that into the entertainment industry. Virtual reality is not going to just be a device that you wear and that it simulates uh, uh, some of these uh, environments by basically just like using your already pre-existing senses. No, virtual reality is eventually going to tap into your central nervous system to where like everything I smell and I see and all of my senses of touch and taste, those are all electrochemical impulses that are uh, uh, my brain, my brain has to make those things and interpret those signals. Now imagine we can actually tap into that with smart technology, computer devices, and then you can simulate any sort of environment. Any sort of environment. That's going to be crazy. A lot of people are going to want to stay tapped into their computers all the time. More so than they already even do now. You think Second Life right now takes people's lives away? Holy crap. Imagine the possibilities like, oh, computer, just run the sorority house simulator. <laughs> or computer, run the clock tower simulator and give me 2,000 rounds of ammo. Yeah, stuff like that. It's going to be wild, man. Wild. There's so many different devices that are now out there. They're developing that are capturing carbon out of the atmosphere. That are turning... Uh, you know, water desalination technology that is, like, price is plummeting quickly. Um, technology that captures uh, moisture out of the air and is able to filter and purify it at just, at just extraordinarily cheap. A lot of these technologies, what they're going to do when they become mass available and they become on a planetary scale, I think that that's the real thing that's going to possibly save the lives of these animals out in the wild. Because once you start actually getting people to really just, I mean, human 2.0 level, once you get all of those basic needs of life and you decentralize them, technology is one of the greatest democratizing forces in the world. Once you give them to everyone, because it's going to be so cheap and it's going to be so impossible to control, you, governments, people, the powers that be, they're not going to be able to hold the tie back. Technology has always been revolutionizing once you get those people out of that those places you know in the third world where a lot of these animals are nearing extinction once that happens that's why I really think that that's that's the key that's the main that's the big thing we'll have a greater sense of symbiosis with the natural world around us and a lot of the wild places, I think, will be able to revert and reclaim their wild, their wild roots. So one of the reasons why, uh, you know, Heidi uh, agreed to work with the uh, Exotic Genome Repository and get genetic samples of all of the cats here, because look, as the it's going to take a while. It's gonna, the things I am talking about; they are going to take time. They are going to take time. And look, we could cause some really... Oh, man. We could, we, could break, we could break a lot of things in the natural world before we get our act together. But it doesn't necessarily mean that we can't rewind. And if we have the core genetic data for a lot of these animals, using some of the technologies that I'm describing and stuff like that, who's to say that we can't get our act together, let the, rewild, let the wild kind of rewild, reclaim... And then uh, push uh, push kitties out. And then we hop on one of Elon Musk's rockets. Go to Mars. Go traverse the known universe. Become an extraplanetary species. This is how this stuff happens. Okay. You're sounding kind of a tinfoil hat-ish there, Derek. No, I don't. No, I don't. Just have vision. That's all. It's easy. Just don't ever, uh, don't ever let your imagination go away from you and see the possibilities in the world. I read a lot. I read a lot. Oh. 
The singularity! Oh, yeah. You know, Michio Kaku, Ray Kurzweil, Neil, Neil deGrasse Tyson, Elon Musk. Oh, these people are my heroes. He rose. He rose and she rose. Yeah, baby. Anyway, oh my gosh, this is a lot longer than I was originally anticipating. Um, a good place that you can find different articles that kind of talk about some of the things that I talked about, but a lot smarter. Um, there's one, I go to, I go to singularityhub.com a lot, and uh, that has a lot of really great uh, uh, blog posts that are written by uh, experts in their fields of technology and medicine, um, you know, and, and are very forward-thinking people, and they're kind of like, they kind of read the room, so to speak, and, and they make these really, like, interesting, um, well-thought-out predictions for, like, where, like, we're currently going. And it's, it's fascinating stuff. It's something I'm, I'm really into. Um, so yeah, singularityhub.com is, uh, is a really good one if you want to learn some more stuff about this. Anyway, I've been babbling for so long. I'll, uh, I'll talk to you later, folks, okay? Bye-bye. <laughs>